Okay, I, uh, hopefully I got my um, uh, microphone uh, uh, working here, working better. Uh, I just noticed uh, that the last session that I did, the, uh, the microphone was having problems, so sorry about that. Uh, and so yeah, be, that, that's kind of one reason why it's good to have people kind of live on these that can at least let me know if, if there's some issues with that. So. I basically seem to have a broken microphone on my uh, built-in. If I'm not careful watching which microphone I'm using on recording, um, it'll have issues. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought, uh, so, so in the previous help session, I'd been giving some, going back over uh, the, actually the assignment eight uh, on linked lists uh, kind of solution. I, I might, I might spend five or 10 more minutes on that again, just because I, I doubt people could really get much from that video. Um, and then I also kind of want to talk a little bit about the, the most recent assignment nine, uh, on stacks that we'd just done. So in particular, I mostly want to look at the, uh, using stacks functions. So like the, the template functions, the sort stack, um, things like that. So, uh, let me, let me get let me go ahead and just uh, get going on these. Um, like I said, maybe I'll just real quickly, if I can, uh, try and redo a little bit of the things that I was talking about for the uh, two assignments back, the assignment eight. So, um, let's see if I can get that open here. So, as usual, let me make certain that everything is still compiling and running here. So I'll do a clean, um, make all. Um, make the test here, so oops. Um, did it again. Um, Um, like I've said before, I need to be patient here. Um, so I don't know if other people do the same thing I did, but uh, I didn't quite wait till everything was built before trying to run my test. So you have to get back to the message here um, that the terminal will be reused uh, and, and make certain nothing was um, had an error while it was building there. So there we go. So, okay, everything's still building cleanly and running cleanly. So I think I'm just going to talk about the uh, the last function that you did on assignment eight. Um, I haven't been posting these example solutions, but um, if these would be useful to people, let me know. So I might kind of make these available. Uh, so I'm not certain if people um, might want to use these or not. Um, but yeah, in the previous video, I, I've been kind of going through the delete value that I had as uh, an example solution here. Um, and um, I, I, I was trying to show you kind of how I debug these things um, on the board. Maybe I'll do that real quickly uh, again here, right? So in this example solution here that you're seeing uh, on the video, um, um, the algorithm that I suggested for the last function was you should first uh, use delete front um, and, and iterate through the list, the, the linked list so as long as the front value was equal to the value that you're trying to delete, or the list is not null, um, so, so the list is not empty, right? So as long as front is not equal to null pointer. So as long as you have both of those, then um, call delete front. Delete front should correctly update the front pointer. So after you return from de uh, delete front, uh, the, the, the front pointer will be you know, the, the new front. Like this. So this should remove if there's one or more um, nodes in the linked list that are equal to the value that you're trying to remove, it'll remove those. And after you're done with this loop here, the, the solution that I have, front will be pointing to either the list will be empty, so front will be null, so, so, so this will be empty, or front will be pointing to a node that whose value is not equal to the value that you're trying to remove. So at that point, you need to check if there's any value after the front. Uh, that needs to be removed. Okay, um, and I and in my example solution, I, I suggested that you could do pretty much the same thing, but remove things off the back of the node 
use a delete back. And, and you could do that, um, although I kind of skipped over doing that because the, the solution that I do in the general case to remove things from the middle of the, the linked list uh, will work to also delete the back node if, if it has the value that we're trying to delete. All right. So what I, I just wanted to show, because we are going to be doing more stuff with linked lists uh, and linked data structures like trees and things. So, so it's good to become familiar with being able to use these. OK, so let me show you how this uh, um, solution works here. OK, so if the list isn't empty, we have to check interior nodes. So what I do is I start by setting what I call uh, I create a temporary local variable, which is a pointer to a node called pre and I set that to be front and again remember because of how I've done it here I know front if, if the list isn't empty front has to have a value that's not equal to the one that we want to delete okay so all I'm doing in this example solution which I believe is probably the simplest thing to do um, is I keep track of just the previous node to the node that I want to actually check okay so um, and then inside the loop, while the, the next node to the previous is not equal to null, I want to check the next node. And, and I call the next node curb, current. So at this point, I have a pointer to previous and a pointer to current. And what we're doing is we're checking current to see if its value is the value you want, want to delete or not. All right. So let me let me um, uh, let, let me show what that looks like. So let's say we have a linked list. Um, two or three values that are equal. Let's say we're trying to delete the value one. Okay, so the value we're trying to delete. So the value we're trying to delete is five, right? And let's say we've gotten to that point that I just described. Okay, and, and we've got this. We've got this linked list. So we've got three nodes. I'm going to have three nodes in our linked list. The first node has a value that we don't want to delete. So we know that if the list isn't empty at this point, the front node doesn't have the value five. That's not the value we're, we're searching for. Delete, right? Let's say we have three other nodes, though. The rest of the list consists of three more nodes with the value that needs to be deleted. So, oh. so our list, if everything has been maintained correctly, should look like this. We've got our front pointer, which points to the front node, which doesn't have the value that we're looking to delete. After that, the next pointer of each of these nodes points to the next node in the linked list, right? And I'm showing that we've got three more nodes in the linked list. All have the value five, so they all have to be deleted, right? Um, and our back node, its next pointer is null. So that's supposed to indicate the, the, the null pointer, right? So that's that's our last node in the list. And we've also got the, the back pointer pointing to that last node. So we've got kind of two ways to uh, detect that we're at the back node, right? So let me, let me go back. So here, let's show what happens here. So in here, I set pre equal to front. So we create another node pointer and we just sign these, all right? So, so whatever the memory address is or whatever front is pointing to, pre is gonna be pointing to when you do an assignment. Like that. All right, likewise, you know, so, so pre which points to next is not null. So it's actually pointing to a node. So we'll, we'll enter into our loop here. So now we're going to create another local variable called current, which points to, which is going to be assigned to the address of prev next. Okay. So that is this node. Prev next points to the, 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 the node at this address here. So that's going to be the, uh, the, the state. Uh, let, me, let me go back to um, the video here. So that's going to be the state um, after those two steps. Okay. So we've got pre. It starts off pointing the front node. 
occurrence place the node uh, after the fire. Okay. So let's look at the um, step that happens next, right? So um, we check if the current, the, the value in current is equal to the value that we're trying to delete, right? Which it is. So, so the node uh, that current is pointing to has a value of five. And, and that's equal to what we're trying to do. So we're going to go into the if part here. So uh, we're going to set preves next uh, to be equal to currents next. Uh, let's skip over this. So this handles the, the special case where we're deleting the back node here. Um, and then we delete current, uh, and then we update the, 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 the size of this. So that's really all we do. So, so notice this here. What this is doing is that is actually removing the current node from our linked list, OK? So let, let, let's show this. So freeze next, we point to currents next, okay? So freeze next is here, but, but by setting freeze next equals currents next, we're, we're setting whatever currents next is pointing to to be what freeze next is pointing to, right? So again, you know, I encourage you to, to draw things out like this when you're working with linked lists. So that statement has that effect. So we, we basically, excise this node from the linked list. So, so now going from the front, there's only two nodes remaining in the linked list, right? And then the next statement in the, the code was to delete current. We can safely delete current because we don't need it anymore, right? Because we're actually removing this node with that value five from the linked list. Um, and out it goes, right? Um, now, you know, if, if you look at the, the code again, I mean, that was at the end of the loop besides we, we you know we deleted current we decrement the size so now our, our size of our linked list is now uh, we got three items remaining we had four to start with now we got three right? so now we won't execute the else part we'll go back up and do the while start now now preve which points to next is still not null um, as we'll see here um, and we're going to delete another node okay so let, let's show that so Free, which points to next, um, is not null, right? So, you know, um, we're not at the end of our list yet. So now we're going to set, by that, by, by the example solution, we're going to set current again equal to pre's um, next, right? But, but now pre's next points to uh, the second node. So that has the effect that the current points to this node now, right? So but now we've got the same situation I just had before, right? Free points to this node, current points to this node. If, when we check if current's value is equal to five, we find it is. So we'll go into the if statement. Um, we will update pre's uh, next to be equal to current's next. So again, that effectively removes this node from our linked list. And then we delete what current is pointing to, freeing up its memory, returning it back. Then we do it again. Okay? So now when we come up to the top of the node, uh, the, the linked list, uh, pre's next is still not null. So we're going to ex keep executing the loop. Uh, we're going to set uh, current to be equal to pre's next. So we'll, we'll, we'll point current to here. Now, if I can go back and look at the code real quickly again. Now, when we say preves next equals currents next, um, this happens. So preves next equals currents next, but currents next is the null pointer because current is pointing to the last node in the linked list. So effectively, what happens when you, when you assign this to be preach next is now preach next has the null pointer, right? 
then we do the same thing. So we delete what current is pointing to like that. And then uh, we had the, the special case that I'd put in uh, my example solution. So um, I'll show that to you again. Um, so here is the only place. So if current is equal to back, which it is. So both current and, and, and back are pointing to the same thing. We set back equal to pre, okay? So if current is equal to back, uh, we set back equal to pre, because pre was pointing to the node before the back node that we just deleted. So the re result in this case um, is you know this linked list with five with, with three values that, that we were trying to delete, three fives. All those three were found and removed, and we end up with our correct version of the list. So both, you know, the, the list is of size one, both front and back point to that node. Um, and the next pointer for our one and only node um, is the null pointer, okay? So that was what I had um, uh, in the previous video that, um, um, had some audio problems. Sorry, sorry about that. I kind of talked a little bit about that, right? So hopefully this this worked there. But but I just want to show that. And, and also again, if it would be useful, um, I, I can make these example solutions uh, available uh, for people to take a look at, right? So especially for like usually like the last task is usually the hardest one. Um, uh, let me share my screen again here. Yeah, I mean, usually the last task is, is often the hardest one. So it can be often useful to go back and look at an example solution if you didn't quite get all the way there um, or something like that. So, all right. So that was um, assignment eight on linked lists, right? So again, I'm, I'm mostly kind of want to show at least one example of that uh, because we are, we, we are going to be doing things both with arrays and linked list based backing storage for our data structures. So so it's good to become comfortable with, with using pointers and, and manipulating linked lists like this and, and, and correctly you know, allocating and deallocating memory, and that kind of stuff. So that's all that is kind of goals of this class that you get experience doing things like that. So let me go ahead and close off the assignment eight here. Um, and let's look at, the, I haven't made like a final pass on, on assignment nine, but I'm probably going to do that, gonna close it up here today. Let, let's, let's discuss assignment nine a little bit. So, oops. Um, all right, so I've got a solution here, but let me, let me again, as usual, let me make sure everything pause and runs. All right, so um, Assignment nine, um, I'm probably going to, unless, but, so let me, let me real quickly look at the, the, the um, um, do parentheses match and decode ID sequence. So, um, so let's look at the stack functions dot the CPP. So, you know, uh, if I hadn't given you kind of the, the pseudocode for this, uh, it might be uh, tough to do this, but, but you know, this is a, um, a good example of how you can use a stack to actually solve a problem. So instead of implementing a stack, we're, we're using a stack on these last uh, uh, few tasks, right? So um, as I had mentioned in, in like a previous video, you know, so you can either have a stack of integers or here I'm showing like a stack of characters uh, because what, I, what I'm doing uh, on this, um, example is I push on um, 
So, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the next one here. So for this one, um, yeah, I mean, you probably want like a, a stack of characters, right, uh, to do your matching. So, uh, the, I mean, the, the, basically the way that the do parentheses algorithm works that, that um, I gave you is as we push on opening parentheses, uh, whenever we um, encounter an open parentheses, and then whenever we encounter a closing parentheses, we pop one off, right? So we know we're unbalanced if we ever come to the point where we have a, a, um, a closing parentheses, but there's no opening parentheses to balance it with on the stack. So that's one error condition, right? So so uh, here, um, if if uh, so, whenever we um, oh, and by the way, some somebody kind of showed uh, this. Probably you know, this, since this is C plus plus, this is uh, this is what I probably showed should have shown you guys to do. Uh, So uh, new style, um, um, uh, these, are, these are known as new style, um, 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 what are they called, um, uh, iterative loops here. So this will do the same thing, instead, but instead of explicitly losing an index, um, uh, this will get the characters one by one out of the string um, as, as, a, as a character, right? So I, was, I really could have done that um, instead. It should still work here. Um, I just like that, um, and, and um, yeah, I'll probably fix my solution to actually use that. So whenever you can use this um, sort of uh, uh, um, explicit iteration over the items of a, uh, you know, of, of a sequence, so, so a string you can treat like anything that's the kind of you can treat as an array where you get the items, have a sequence from zero, one, two, you can also treat just as a sequence uh, and not have to explicitly. You know. So in, in the next one, we might wanna still use the explicit index because we wanna know that number. But for this one, you know, we just need the characters in the sequence from the first to the second to the last character. So yeah, I mean, that, that still works fine. Now, either way. So yeah, anyway, if it's an opening parentheses, we just want to push it on our stack. If it's a closing parentheses, um, um, if the stack is an empty one, we'll pop one off. So that's matching the parentheses, as most people probably figured out. Um, but, you know, so it's an error condition. So um, if the, the stack is empty, then that means we didn't have, we, we've got a, a, a closing parentheses that didn't have a matching open parentheses. So the answer should be false in that case. Um, or the other cases that that if you exactly well, it, so um, you could also have the case that um, there was too many opening parentheses. So in that case, after you're done, if there's still stuff left on the stack, you, you still work balanced, right? So as some people noted, um, you can just directly return if if the the, the stack is empty. So if it's empty. This is going to be this is going to say true, and that's what you want. So if the stack is empty, then it's true that the expression was balanced. And if it's not empty, there was there are some remaining open open parentheses that didn't get matched. So um, the answer should be false. All right. So that was the do parentheses match. Um, So uh, as I started describing, so there's kind of two approaches here. I talked about this uh, in previous video. Um, uh, you can either have a stack of integers or a stack of um, like uh, uh, characters or strings. But yeah, you, oh, as, I, as I found out or, or figured out last time, you really have to have like a, a stack of strings if you want to do it. Um, you can't really use single character because it is possible for the index to be two digits. So you would need, you know, at least two characters. So you need a, a string. So as a, as a, as a stack of integers, uh, if you follow the algorithm, and, and I won't go into how this works here, but um, um, you do need to know the actual index number because you want to push on, in, in my case, if I have a st stack of integers, I just push on the integer index plus one because um, we start counting at one, two, three, four for this little puzzle de decoding the, the ID sequence here. So, um, uh, 
So the way this works is if it's an I, uh, we just want to remove uh, the items till the stack is empty. If you follow the algorithm, right? So, so while the, 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 the index stack is, um, while it's not empty, um, again, so another thing, so I've, I've told people this before, but yeah, prefer using not and and or instead of, you know, bang and ampersand um, instead of the old kind of C notation. So uh, I don't have, I don't always remember to do that on my own code there. So, so while not, while, while the stack is not empty, uh, we just take the item off the top of the stack. Um, and in this, this case, I just explicitly convert the integer to a string so I can append it to the end of my result string and then we return it. Um, all right, so then let's, let, let me show you my example solution for the insert item on sorted stack. So this is what the ones I'm mostly want to talk about, right? So for here, um, as almost everybody that, that got to doing the task four and five, you know, pretty much they have this right. So, I mean, you really did have to make this a template class to even get the, the, the test to work, right? Or not a, a, a template function, I'd say. So these are, this is a regular function instead of a member function, but it is, it is templatized on type T. So that allows us to pass in items of some unspecified type and then to uh, sort a stack of some unspecified type, right? And this matches up directly with our, our code, right? Because our, our code is templatized on type T. So we can specify, so, so we need a temporary stack. We, we need a, um, a concrete instance of a stack. So, so here you had to specify that this was a, uh, the, the base class, right? So this allows us to actually pass in A stacks or L stacks, and the code would still work. So that's an example of object-oriented programming here, yeah, right? So, so our function is, is generic. Any, anything that is a stack can be passed in and sorted by this, no matter what, how, we, how we concretely implemented the stack. So using arrays or using linked lists, right? this, this code still works, right? Uh, but yeah, our temporary stack, I mean, does have to be some concrete instance, but it doesn't matter, you know, uh, what you use. So here we used an, an A stack. I mean, you know, you could have used your linked list stack. Right? So I think I used like an A stack here, but I used um, Oh, you didn't need a temporary stack over there. So um, yeah, so could have used either one. So, so even if I use an L stack, um, it should still run fine, right? Whatever the concrete stack is. So um, here for this one and um, the, the sorting, I, I mean, if you can get past declaring everything and, and understanding what you're doing, I thought the algorithms were relatively simple. You may or may not agree, okay? So for example, for insert item on sort of stack, we need to, to basically go, uh, although you do have to check also that, you know, you, you don't want to try and pull something um, off of an empty stack, okay? Um, but yeah, if, as long as the sort of stack is not empty and as long as the type, the, the top item is greater than the item that we're trying to insert on the sorted stack, we need to get that off because we've got to get to the position, right? So, so we pop off the, type, the, the top item, push it onto this temporary local stack here um, and, and, and yeah, take the top item and pop it off. So once we get past this, either the stack is empty, right? So in which case that means that the item we were trying to insert needs to go all the way at the, the bottom or the end of the stack, right? the, the bottom of the stack. We should think of stacks of having, as having tops and bottoms. Um, or the, the, there could be some items on the stack, but the items on the stack um, are um, less than the item we're trying to insert. So we found the position that we want to push the item onto, and then we have to kind of uh, do the reverse. We have to unwind, we have to get the items back off of our temporary stack and put them back onto what I call the sorted stack. 
So two while loops, um, you know, to, to take some items off, put them on a temporary stack, and then to put those items back on. So take them back off our temporary stack and put them back onto the storage stack. We'll do it here. Um, and then the the, uh, the the sorting. If you followed the algorithm, you know, and, and if you've become comfortable with doing recursion, um, is pretty conceptually easy, right? So our base case is, is that if, if you're given an empty stack, by definition, it's already sorted. So you don't have to do anything if the stack is empty. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll just take the top item off the, the stack, right? So we just pop. The, the top item off the stack, remember that item. We call sort stack recursively. So this will sort, you know, again, this is doing recursion because now the stack is one item smaller. So at some point we'll get to <coughs> doing these recursive calls, we'll get to the, the stack being empty. So we won't infinitely recurse. And at that point, when we return from that, um, um, when we insert the item onto the empty stack, um, you know, by default, the stack will be sorted when we have one item on it, right? Um, and then when we come back and, ins um, um, and insert it, um, um, and, and you know, so, so after we call sort stack, the, 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 the stack is gonna be sorted for the items with one less item, you know, for the item that we removed, then we can safely uh, insert that item into its correct position um, onto our, our stack. So that's how the recursion works um, for our previous assignment. Um, all right. Um, so that's all I kind of wanted to say. Like I said, again, you know, if people kind of want to look at these, let me know. Um, and I'll do something so that um, I can make these available for a time. Uh, they can look over the, uh, the, the, the full example solutions. Um, all right, so let me talk a little bit about assignment 10. So assignment 10, we're going to be working with queues here. Um, so I actually haven't uh, accepted the assignment yet. So let, let me do all the normal steps. Let me get that first. Oops. Um, We'll accept it to get our, um, our our own repository created for it, um, and we'll go through. Let me copy this, but we'll go through our normal checklist. So we um, accepted the assignment. Let's go ahead and clone um, our repository ten. into our assignment subdirectory. And I'll go ahead and open it up. Um, and uh, we'll go ahead and do our configuration of the project. So let's open up the terminal. Um, and then we'll check everything builds and runs. So, and I'll check that my configuration also, like the IntelliSense is working and the code formatting. So, um, let's open up test AQ here. So, There, I mean, things seem to be indenting uh, correctly and everything. So, so I think everything's set up correctly. So let's try and build everything. Control shift one to a clean. Control shift two, get everything built. 
So here, I mean, the structure is pretty similar um, to what we've done for the last two assignments. We're gonna be working with a queue. We've got a, a base class, uh, abstract base class called um, uh, a queue. Um, and then we've got versions for the, um, an array based queue and a linked list based queue called AQ and LQ, but we're also gonna be implementing priority queues. So we've got a, 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 an array based priority queue and a linked list based priority queue. Uh, okay, so it should build um, and in this assignment when you run your test, uh, there are some tests uncommented, so you should get a few running and, and passing. But anyway, so you should always make certain that you can get up to that point before you start working on task one. Um, so, you know, there are five tasks uh, in this assignment. The um, First two tasks, we're going to be implementing the queue methods for the array-based queue. Okay, so uh, the previous ones, I've been happy to do some practice with linked lists. So we're going to go back now. Um, I haven't implemented some stuff on on an array-based implementation, so you have to go back and think about how you do the stuff with a fixed block of memory and an array, right? Um, and then we're also going to implement the uh, uh, the in queue uh, method. And so, so the first three tasks. Are implementing the the array based prior uh, array based queue, um, so the um, front um, and then DQ and in queue. Right? So um, I'm not certain why I didn't give you both front and back, but uh, the, let's check it here. Right, so front is going to be pretty much the same as the the top. Um, although you know you implemented top using the linked list in the previous assignment, so now we're going to be implementing front using an array. Right. Um, and then probably I'll talk in more detail about the priority queue, uh, but I do have you go back and do a linked list. So you're going to implement the in queue for a priority queue using your array, but then I also ask you to implement the in queue um, for the linked list based priority queue. Okay, so those are the tasks there. So let me get you started as usual. Um, so you should start with the test AQ and, and uncomment the, uh, the, the, uh, the first unit test for task one from there. Um, so, um, uh, I mean, this should be pretty similar to the top method of the array-based implementation from the previous assignment, right? So uh, if you need some hints on implementing it, so, so maybe I won't show the full implementation of this, but um, so, so let, let's do this. So let's first find the, uh, the, the test AQ, um, like I had already pulled up, um, and uh, uncomment the first unit test for task one here. Right, so there's only one unit test for task one. So this this unit task is um, creating a, a, a queue, an array based queue of integers, and probably like an array based queue of strings, maybe later on. So with two different a container of two different types, and we're using your front method, testing the front method. Um, so to get this to work, um, so kind of like in previous assignments, um, if you go to the base class, there's probably a commented out um, a, a virtual function. So you should go ahead and uncomment that. And that really gives you the signature of how front should be implemented on any classes that are derived from this. So both um, A, Q, and LQ derive from the, the abstract base class Q as in our previous two assignments here. So for our, our AQ, um, we're gonna have to have a front then uh, implemented since we just uncommented that. Uh, I put it after the is empty like I had 
uh, in there. Oh no, let's put it after git side. But in our case, uh, although the signature is mostly the same, but it's not a, a an abstract virtual function. So it's just a function that returns a type T, um, doesn't take any parameters as input, and it's a constant number function. Right? So at this point, you could go back and look at like the previous assignment and look at the top uh, for the array-based um, um, stack. Right? Um, but uh, in, in our case, um, for the array-based implementation, we've got the front index and the back index. Now we're going to be treating, uh, so one thing I should mention is, is that we need to treat the array as a circular buffer, okay? So um, that does add in some complexity for all of these, all right? Um, so, so there will be some differences actually now that I think about it for front here. Uh, well, not for front, but, but when you do the in queue and the DQ, you're going to have to treat the array as a, as a circular buffer, right? But the front index, um, that we're given should be pointing to the front item of the queue. So you can just simply use the front index uh, in this case. So, so yeah, so, so front is relatively straightforward, right? Uh, but you do have to check if, you, if somebody tries to ask for the front item from an empty queue, you should be throwing an exception. Um, All right, so let's put front after the get allocation size in our aq.cpp. As usual, you know, don't leave documentation as an afterthought. You know, always think carefully about your inputs and outputs to your functions and member functions. This method should access and return the value currently at the front of the of this queue. Um, yeah, and you know, as I discussed in the lecture videos and things, so in this array based implementation, getting uh, the front item is a constant time 01 operation, right? because we can just directly, you know, we've got an index to, to the, the front item. So it returns a, a copy of the value of type T currently at the front of So, um, so oh yeah, so it's a little bit. It's a little bit of a, of, um, a um, it's probably tougher to figure out how to, to make kind of a stub thing that uh, that returns. So you know we don't really know what type T is, but um, uh, in C plus plus you can use uh, all types should have some. Um, um, so I'm just going to be calling the. Um, default constructor here um oh um so yeah i also forgot you know so so you know, we are templatized on these member functions on type t right so anyway if, if i try and invoke a default constructor on type t it should create a, a value of type t whatever t and that should work even for built-in types like ints and floats and things so um, and it should return an and string. So, so we test with instant strings. But that should that'll probably return like a value of zero um, for my front item. Um, oh, and uh, still forgot one more thing. So this is a member 
function of the array base Q implementation. All right, so let's see if that builds as a stub function. Okay. Yeah, it is happy with that as like a stub looks like. Um, and let's try our tests. So now we are, uh, our first failing test is happening. Um, yeah, so we are returning zero. It's happening on line 30. Um, here we're, we're expecting a seven, we're getting back to zero, right? Um, all right, so, um, So yeah, I mean, this first task should be pretty easy to figure out, I hope. You just need to return the value that the front index is pointing to. Right? But you do have to check. Uh, again, you should reuse the is empty method. And if it is empty, uh, you know, so first before trying to access uh, the front item, if, if the queue is empty, uh, throw the queue empty exception. Right? So at this point, if you've been doing the assignments, you should have done that, um, have, have quite a few examples and have done that quite a few times. Um, all right, so let me quickly talk about the NQ and the DQ method. Um, um, so again, NQ and DQ, so it's a DQ first. Um, again, you'll find that um, these have, you know, commented out uh, versions in the um, um, in the base class, right? So for DQ, DQ doesn't take uh, any values and doesn't return a result. Okay, so DQ is like pop, right? So so if you want if you want the item at the front of the queue, use front, like you use top for a queue. But if you want to actually remove that item, so so that now it, it's out of the queue and the next item in the queue becomes the the, the, the new front item, you have to actually DQ the item using our interface. Right. And if you want to add a new item to the back of the queue, you enqueue it. Right. And for enqueue, you have to provide the item that you're enqueuing on the back of the queue. All right. Um, so, you know, again, to, to, to dequeue the item, and you're not returning anything, but you have to, to just manipulate the front index. Right. Um, so, so you basically need to increment the front index, right? So, you know, if the front index is zero, it should just be incremented to one, right? If the front index is one, it should be incremented to two, okay? But we are implementing our queue as a circular buffer, okay? And we keep track of both the front and the back index, all right? So, um, so let's say, um, and, and you, you know what the current queue size is because um, besides front and back index, you've got the allocation size. So that tells you what, what the current uh, size of the queue is, all right? So let me, let me show you the basic um, issue that um, um, we have here with the circuit buffer. Let's say that currently our buffer uh, our array is of size 10, okay? So, so it's been allocated with, with 10 items. That means that the valid indexes are zero to nine, right? And, and let me just draw a, another picture of this. And again, here's another place where, you know, drawing these things out when you're implementing NQ and DQ might be helpful. So we've got an array, um, I should have mentioned, so the array is just called the uh, values, right? So it's, it's, and it's going to be dynamically allocated, um, like we, like we, like you've seen done in the past. So we've, we've got an array values. So if the allocation size is currently 10, that means that the valid indexes are from zero to nine. Right. 
They need that in order to treat this successfully as a, as a circular button. So let's say some things have been being in queued and dequeued, right? Um, so for the uh, the dequeued, um, you need to keep take the item off the front of the queue. And let's say our queue currently looks like this, and that's and that um, is actually wrapped around. Let's say the front item is at index eight. So uh, let me check here. So in, in this assignment for the AQ, it was called front index and back index. So those were the, um, the, 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 the member variables that keep track of the index were the front and the back. So in this case, the buffer is, is wrapped around. The front index is eight. The back index is one, and the size of the queue is four. There's four items on the queue. Right? So if I call DQ um, now, all you have to do is increment the front index, and you're fine, right? And unlike for you know uh, nodes like lists, you don't have to do anything to dynamically uh, you know remove that value. You know it, uh, if we come back around, we'll just overwrite that with a new value, and, and what's in there will be lost. But we're not keeping track of that anymore because we just dequeued uh, the item that was at the front of the queue. Now two is at the front of the queue. All right. So what happens here? All right. So if we dequeue again. Um, front index would be 10, but you have to treat the buffer as a circular buffer. Okay, so basically, every time you increment both the front index and the back index, so every time you increment these, like we did here, you have to check if I've wrapped the buffer. Okay? And you have to check that using the allocation size. The allocation size tells you what the current size of the buffer is, tells you what the, 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 the illegal index is. Right? So, so 10 is illegal for a zero based array. Whose indexes are zero to nine, right? So you could just set, say that if front index is greater than or equal to allocation size, set front index to zero, or you could use the modulus operation. So very common if you see people implementing stuff using circular buffers, they'll do things like So you can't see that. So basically, if you just take the front index, add one to it, and then do a mod by the allocation size. So the mod returns the remainder of doing the division. So if we mod by 10, and if the front index became 10, like we just did here, the remainder is zero. Right? So by modding, it wraps around uh, back to the front of the box. Which is what you need, right? So as soon as you increment it past the end of your circular buffer, it needs to go back to zero. So now we've got two items after our two DQs, and the, the front is at index zero and the back is at index one. Right? All right. And uh, you know, the same thing happens when you're um, in queuing onto the back, right? So you have to check. Uh, so after you uh, increment the item to NQ to the next location, uh, you might have wrapped around. So, so you have to check um, where you did that or not. Also, another thing you have to be checking uh, if the buffer is full before you NQ and then maybe increasing the size of the buffer, right? So that's another thing. I'm, I'm sure we described that on the NQ here. So. Um, because when you're in queuing, you know, when you're dequeuing, the size could go to zero, but 
you know, you don't have to worry about the, the, the size of the, the allocation size of the array being big enough. But when you're in queuing, it could be that, you know, if I've only got an allocation size of 10 and I try to include in queue the, the 11th item, I need to grow my backing storage, my, my um, array. So it's big enough to now hold 11 items, right? So uh, first before trying to insert the, the item, you have to ensure that there's enough room. Um, and I made this easy for you again, like we've done in past assignments, so that you, you just simply call grow queue if needed, right? So, so before you try to do anything, if you call this, you know, if, if the, the current allocation, allocation size is 10 and the current size of the queue is 10, that means there's no room to uh, in queue a new item. So the grow queue if needed will allocate a new array, double the size of it, copy the items from the old array to the new array, um, and, um, um, and then ensure after you're done with that method that you've got enough room to in queue uh, an, another item. Right. Um, Right. So like, like I showed in my diagram, the back index should always point to the index of the actual back, current back item. So to insert a new value on the back of the queue, you have to first increment the back index, take into it to account that you might be wrapping around. So when, again, when you insert here, just like we were showing, um, you might have gone past the end of the, uh, the buffer, the allocation size, in which case you have to wrap back around to zero, right? Um, and then once you've done that, uh, you uh, back index will be pointing to the place where the new value should be inserted into the array to do the in queue. All right. Um, all right. So that that's that's all I think I'm going to talk about here for this help session today. Hopefully the the audio is good here. I'm going to check that this time before I post. Um, so I'll talk more about priority queues, okay? Um, so a priority queue works like a queue, except when, uh, whenever you dequeue an item, so, so the, the formal definition of a priority queue is that when you dequeue an item, it will re remove the item that has the highest priority from the queue at that point, okay? Uh, we actually implement um, our priority queue uh, kind of in the reverse of that. So basically we keep the either the, the array or the linked list uh, sorted by priority. Um, um, so I don't want to say something wrong here, uh, but um, so yeah, so, so what we're actually doing is for the array based queue. When we enqueue an item, uh, so instead of just enqueuing it at the back, like we just did here, we're going to enqueue it into the array, into the position to keep the array sorted by priority, right? So we have to do a little bit of a search. Um, and since this is array based, we have to do something like kind of like a, like a sorting, like, like a bubble sort or an insertion sort. So basically, what I suggest that you do is you start at the back. Um, and then you shift items down uh, until you reach the place where the, the, the new item should be inserted into the array to maintain it in, in priority order so that you always have the highest priority or item at the front of the queue down through the lowest priority item to the back of the queue. Right? And so by starting at the back and, 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 and going towards the front, um, um, it makes it a little bit easier for the array base implementation to maintain the queue sorted by prior. Right? Um, and then likewise, um, I asked actually also to ask you to implement the in queue method for the L priority for the linked list based priority queue. It's similar, but, uh, but uh, uh, we're going to be bubbling uh, from the front to the back. So, you know, for a priority based queue, um, uh, we have a linked list and our next pointer, we, we, we only use a single linked list in this case for our, our, our linked list for a priority queue. So you can't, you can't easily go from the back to the front um, unless you use like a doubly linked. So, so have pointers both the pre and next, right? So in this case, um, you know, we start at the front node 
um, and if the, the 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 item we're trying to insert is of higher priority than the front node, we just insert it as the new front of the queue, the, the new front node. If it's not, you know, we, we go to the next node and we, we find the position in the linked list to insert the new node um, so that it's the correct order by priority. And that's how we do the priority queue here is by maintaining the the the, the backing storage uh, data structure, whether it's an array or the linked list, uh, in you know to be sorted by priority whenever we in queue items. Um, All right, so that's that's it for this. Like I said, I'll, I'll talk more about the array-based priority queues and or see if people join have uh, questions or things. So, um, you know, um, hopefully most people can get the first three tasks uh, um, kind of um, uh, done without too much trouble. Uh, and then, you know, you will have to uh, think a little bit about, you know, basically you're gonna be performing kind of like an insertion sort um, to do these. It, it's not really uh, like a sort because it, it's like insert item on um, on a, a sorted list like we just did in, in the previous um, assignment, right? Because the, the, if you're maintaining the queue in a sorted order, you just have to find the position to insert that one item correctly, right? So, so, so basically you're inserting a new item into its correct position whether that's in the array where you have to shift items in order to make room to insert it to its correct position or in the linked list where you might have to, to search down to find the, the, the position to insert the node into the linked list. All right. All right, so that's it for this video. I mean, as usual, you know, if you have questions, email them to me while you're working on things and I will see you guys later.